Yes, we miss Community Clovia of Radio One. Truly honored to be a part of Community Conversations and just simply giving it to my listeners straight. And it's our final show. Richmond Mayor L. Douglas Wilder is joining me. He was our, elected our first African American governor in the United States of America. And he's standing here, right here, with me. A walking encyclopedia. Well, but you know, some people used to say to me, particularly little children, they said, you know, we read about you. Haven't you been dead? <laughs> I'll That's good. tell you, I'm still alive. Why? I'm still enjoying so much. And thank you for what you've done by making your show alive, making it a part of people's involvement in terms of seeing our country grow, our nation uh, be a part of providing opportunities for people to do some of the things that I've been fortunate enough to do. And now he's leaving our Richmond City government. Where is he going to? Where is he going to go? Well, I will be here. I'll be around. I'm not going to disappear. Not going away. No, I believe that. Now, let's turn Petersburg and surrounding areas. It's Meet Miss Community Clovia. Thank you so much for waking up and joining me for another edition of Community Conversations. My final Community Conversations with Richmond Mayor L. Douglas Wilder. As mayor, you're right. But I hope this won't be the final because, as I said to you earlier, uh, I'm going to be around. Yeah, you're going to be around for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I started Community Conversations in February of 2005, and you were sworn into office in January of 2005. And I said, Mayor Wilder, I need your help. Brand new, in office, didn't have to do it. And you said, okay, I'll help you kick off the show. And I just want you to know that my show, Community Conversations, is number one on all I of our stations. I am not at all <laughs> surprised because the, the verve and the commitment that you bring to it, as well as the real feeling for the community is shown and I hear it from so many people and you show it so it's no surprise to me that you're not number one uh, and that's an honor coming from a walking encyclopedia well, you might the first the yeah. first african-american governor in the United States of America you might have you know and, and it's I am truly honored to have you a part of my show and well, it's, it's been that it's way it's been long. trying for, for the times but the thing that I've liked is some degree of consistency and some degree of keeping your, your word, making certain where you're going. And that's uh, the kind of thing that I should hope that the mayor elect will bring. We've had conversations uh, in terms of where he is, uh, where, what needs to happen. Even with the presidential election, uh, the, the real thrust is how do the people benefit? Mm -hmm. uh, we, we get past the hoopla and the happiness or the glee relative to uh, the election. What difference does it make? Do you, do you make a difference in the lives of people? I was telling <coughs> some people riding over here today to talk with you that I meet so many people, who, particularly the young people, who say, I want to be involved in politics. I want to. I want to be a young man stopped by the other day in my class at Virginia Commonwealth, and he's in school there, and he said, you know, I want to, I want to get in, I want to do this, I want to do that. And I, 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 I wasn't honest with him, and I regret it. I, 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 I was truthful, but not honest. I told him that he needed to get a, an understanding of finances and money and know how that plays a part. But I should have told him what I do tell people on a regular basis. First of all, get a job. Get a stability to your life. Get some understanding as to how you're going to support yourself mm -hmm. and your family if you choose to have one. Don't let politics be that which you depend on for a living. Don't let politics be that which you depend on for a source of income. Let it be something that comes as a result of your wanting to participate, to give, and not to, to take, it. not to get. And unfortunately, I see around the country, not just here in mm -hmm. our area, but too many people look upon those who serve as to how they can get ahead individually. That's bad, mm -hmm. very bad. In other words, um, being a part of politics is serving the people exactly. and the, keeping the people informed. Exactly. The word politics, polity, you know we've discussed that yes. word. The decision making doesn't mean the decisions for yourself. 
it, it, I mean, look at what's, what's going on in the country today. Uh, people are saying, well, shouldn't Obama and Bush get together? And obviously, many people think that they should to discuss how we're going to extricate ourselves from this mess that we're in. But how did we get into this mess? But by the politicians, by the decision makers, by the people who didn't want to regulate the financial institutions, the banks, <coughs> those who provide credit. And then you, well, we shouldn't have done this, we shouldn't have done that. I just came back from <clears throat> a trip to Saudi Arabia, and I can't tell you how impressed I was with the glee uh, that these people have had relative to the, our election. They see a new beginning around the world. They see uh, hope for so many things to take place because America is a place where we can provide leadership. And when, when you think of that, unfortunately, we, we look past where we are. We need to remember that all politics is local and that you need to just determine how you can best improve your schools, your streets, your crime your neighborhoods, uh, your transportation. Uh, if you can't do that, then whatever happens other places is of no moment. How can we better ourselves to be in a position to look to better others? And that's very good. Uh, considering the fact of uh, 5 million people registered to vote and over 3 million people uh, voted right here in the Commonwealth as we flipped Virginia from, you know, just from the Republican uh, country and we said to it on your democratic show. country. We said it here. You know, I, I got, and I think Linwood can tell you, the numbers of interviews and opportunities that we had to talk with the media. I think it during the campaign, just during that period of time, it, it several hundred. Yeah. Uh, uh, we I saw you on I CNN, did, MSNBC, all of those stations. <laughs> stations. <coughs> And every time someone would ask me, well, what about Virginia? I never hesitated. I said, oh, we'll carry Virginia. And they said, well, why are you so sure? I said, well, I think I know Virginians. I think I know the people there. They're not hide bound to a particular group or party. Yeah. They are independent. They, they've got to be courted. They're not going to be taken for granted. Rubbing shoulders, exactly. lots of hugs, and as I said, on doors. I told, I told Barack, I said, Go there. Go to the southwest. Go to the rural areas. Go to the suburban areas. Don't let anybody tell you that any part of the country is not yours. And, and campaign there. And he did. And so, yes, we got close to 53% of the vote. Yes. Here. Right here in, in Virginia. Virginia. Well, why could I be surprised if those same <laughs> people some 20 years ago elected me? Yeah. As a governor. Of and a you state. know, the and of your before state that, exactly. as lieutenant governor, and even before that, he in Richmond to be elected the first African American senator uh, since what then was Reconstruction. Construction. But yeah. the the important thing is that <clears throat> people don't live in the past. A few like to remember the past because it was more beneficial to them. But our best days are ahead of us. Uh, our stars are hopefully still in ascendancy. Hope that younger people can fasten their hopes to these stars and, and grab them and move on. And it's time you know, for a change. Time is here. Change we can believe in. Exactly. Right I, heard now. You, I heard you. You wrote the campaign <laughs> speech for him. <laughs> I wish. Oh, man, we're going to take a break and we're going to come on back and we have some clips from our former show in 2005. And let's see that you really hit the ground. Right. <laughs> we'll see. I'm Clovia Lawrence. Richard Mayor L. Douglas Wilder is joining us.